Next speaker doesn't really need a lot of introduction from me. An actor, very well known actor, but above that, a man who's close to all our hearts as animal rights activist. He stands up and he speaks out and he's not afraid to tell the truth. He's a man we could all aspire to be like and he's a spokesperson for the animals that we all can aspire to be as well. So put your hands together and welcome Mr Peter Egan. It's uh, really a great honour and pleasure for me to be here and share your company today. Um, I'm really kind of a latecomer to all of these great causes. Um, I became involved in the animal welfare and animal rights movement about 20 years ago. I've been rescuing dogs for 30 years now. And I'm attached to more charities than I can name. I've become a man who can't say no. So, um, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and about ten years ago, uh, I decided to, to change my lifestyle entirely, um, becoming aware of the war that we human animals are waging on every other species on this our wonderful planet. I decided to make, I think, the best decision I've ever made in my life, and that was the decision to become vegan. Example, 
determining the function of organs and that some diseases were infectious. Today we are studying higher levels of organization, which are drug and disease response, which is where drug and disease response occur. So why does it continue? The next big development that solidified the intersection was World War II. The doctor's trial at Nuremberg presented evidence that the Nazis used animals in experiments, but this evidence was largely ignored and the focus was on human experimentation. An American researcher was summoned to testify. He stated that animals were vital for medical science to advance. He had a vested interest in animal modeling, but everyone ignored this, and his testimony not only solidified animal modeling, it made it a legal requirement. After that, very large sums of money became involved with many vested interest groups profiteering, and thus animal modeling became the status quo. <laughs> no matter what the status quo is, it's very difficult to change. How can we end it? Animal modeling has taught scientists interesting facts about various species strains but it has been an unqualified failure in medicine in terms of predicting human response to drugs and disease. The reasons for this involve scientific concepts that are impossible to communicate to people who lack a broad background in science. Even many scientists do not understand these concepts. What is easy to communicate is the many instances of failures of animal models. For example, Roughly 90% of drugs that pass animal tests fail in humans. This failure rate would not be tolerated in any other field, and that alone should cause the, be the abandonment of animal modeling. Biops passed animal tests because, but caused heart attacks and strokes in thousands of patients. 19 medications were withdrawn from the US market between 1998 and 2006, because of severe adverse reactions not predicted by animal models. Tamoxifen, a drug for breast cancer, was originally marked as a Bethkin for birth control pill, based on animal models. But more people, more women became pregnant, pregnant on tamoxifen than on previous drugs. It was later learned that the drug was effective against some kinds of breast cancer and is still used for that disease. After the drug was marketed, it was shown to cause tumors in the livers of rodents. Many drugs have probably been lost because of adverse effects in animals that would not have occurred in humans. The U.S. National Cancer Institute believes society may have lost cures for cancers because the drugs fail in animal tests. MAO inhibitors were originally invented as a treatment for tuberculosis. It was given to patients suffering from TB, but they showed no sign of improvement. They were less depressed, however, and that is how we discovered the first antidepressant. The only way that animal modeling is going to end is by getting scientists to speak out about the lack of scientific viability of the factors. This way can be accomplished is by a peer-reviewed scientific debate judged by independent experts from the relevant fields of science. For Life on Earth has been calling for this and has support in Parliament. But surprisingly, the vested interest groups are refusing to participate. The debate is fair, transparent, and scientifically beyond dispute. So why would the animal model community oppose it? The only reason they oppose it, in my opinion, is because of money. So, that's, these are all Ray Greek's words. words. He's a remarkable man. Um, if you don't already follow Flo, look us up because it's a great charity. And um, I'm going to get off this because I'm feeling rather dizzy at the moment. <laughs> but it's really, really great to be with you. I admire you all hugely. Fantastic, and thank you.